Good morning everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I will be swatching my selection of blue watercolours which are mostly Daniel Smith and Winsor and & Newton. I have like the rare occasional Schmincke and um, Michael Harding in here as well. I had a couple of Holbeins but because I'm going to be doing a Holbein unboxing hopefully soon I thought I just leave those so that I can just bring them in at the end of the unboxing and show you what other Holbein um, paints I have so um, so today I am going to indulge a little bit and be a little bit more creative with my swatching um, the reason is, in on Thursday, like day after tomorrow, I'll be going back into hospital. And so, like last time, I had a little bit of fun with my trees before I went into hospital. <laughs> I did a video with swatching trees. So today, I thought I'd do something like similar. Not trees, but similar with my watercolours. Just have a little playful time with you. I hope you enjoy it. Um, it is rather unorthodox, but um, I just find it relaxing, just playing with my paints. And I really, really hope you enjoy it. So I will um, pause here to just sort out my sketchbook, my sketchbook, um, which is under here. And I just um, did a bit of scribbling on it last night before the video. I'll, I'll show you in a bit. Be right back. So last night I created a little layout and it's in my moleskin sketchbook. I was just messing about with my pen and I thought you know what I could actually do to swatch the uh, the blues because I wanted to swatch the blues in this video. I could create little C's. Now I know that sounds bizarre, <laughs> um, but I just went with the idea and I thought, what if I did like a layout where I had tiny islands and I just swatch around them like they were seas? I know it's, it sounds strange, <laughs> but it made sense to me last night. So I went with it. Um, I used my, uh, obviously my moleskin sketchbook. Um, some watercolours I had laying about and my uh, Pigma Micron 003. Now this is my favourite pen to draw with. I draw literally everything with it. Um, I, ju I just love it. But um, So I'm comfortable with this pen. So I just did a layout. Um, to make a long story short, I came up with this. So um, Without further ado, I'll just start doing my little islands. I'll start, I don't know if I'll do all of them or I'll just um, do one by one. I think I might do one by one. Um, I just very, very loosely sketched with some pencils so I wouldn't get stage fright. But um, I'm just going to outline the little islands very quickly as you can see there that's done and where is my um so, so i'm just going to erase the pencil now just give it a little bit more volume I'm just going to do one side very loosely. And just a few lines to give the um, illusion of shadow. Right. That's my first tiny island. We should do a little bit. Here. 
I am trying to um, not get carried away because I know that I'm on a clock here. <laughs> but maybe one day I'll just do it very um, meticulously and do like a long video of me sketching. Um, so it depends what you want. You can tell me what you would like to see. Now, what I'm going to do is just going to add some water with my Da Vinci number four brush and then bring in my Da Vinci number two brush for my first swatch. I am going to use Daniel Smith French Ultramarine which is of course a BB29 which most Ultramarines are and I'm going to go very lightly and gently just put the colour around the island like that and then very quickly just feather it out I can add more water or colour as I go and I might do just do like a oval shape around the island actually there isn't much colour so I'm gonna just add some around here I hope you don't think my mode of swatching is too strange. <laughs> I just like to make things a little bit fun, especially when I am kind of nervous. Uh, I always go into treatment is a little nerve wracking, so I try and calm myself before I go. So this is a, a really fun way to do that. So we did what well, I did. Um, Daniel Smith French Ultramarine. Now, the next one is Cobalt. So I'm going to just very loosely go around my uh, pattern. As you can see, I'm not even thinking much about it. I'm just, just going with where the pen wants to go. I am on a clock as I said just um, adding a little bit of shadow not really shadow it's just the illusion of shadow a few lines And I'm just going to rub out the pencil. I don't know why I did these ovals around them. I guess it was for spacing. It was late. I was tired. <laughs> just finished doing my um, work and I just wanted to play my sketchbook. So Next, as I said, oh, just to rotate that. I have Cobalt Blue, Winter and Newton. I'm not even going to go for the number four. I'm just trying to, I'm speed painting here. Just watching, um, swatching? Again with the swatching. Switching brushes is too kind of <laughs> time consuming. So I'll just go with the number two. Um, just do it on this side now because it's easier to see what I'm doing maybe I should put a teeny bit too much water there paper to the rescue 
the dab and yeah. it really doesn't matter if I don't go exactly on the line especially with paints like cobalt blue that lift very easily you can always um, add a little bit of water afterwards and lift it gently with your brush and just feather it out I almost, uh, yes, last night I almost started doing like details like mountains and adding little trees and I was thinking no, I mean, this is just a swatching session, <laughs> I shouldn't both go absolutely crazy about it, just to keep it simple and the video not too long. Okay, so number three, I have cerulean blue, so... I'm going to just very loosely, I always feel at home when I have a pen in my hand, I feel at home when I have a pen in my hand, I have some good paper in front of me and a nice box of watercolours next to me, <laughs> with a brush obviously. It's a funny story how I got introduced to these pens. I believe it was Christmas. Well, it was coming up to Christmas a few years back. And where's my um, racer? It was coming up to Christmas a few years back and I had purchased a little art haul from Jackson's. And at that period of my life, I was experimenting with pens because I uh, I realised that I really like drawing with pens. I felt that I could draw <laughs> more naturally with pens. It just came to me a lot more um, naturally to draw with pens, which is crazy. But oh, I haven't put water around it, have I? Um, so I was experimenting with pens and in my art hall jackson's sent me a sample of this pen it, it was just this pen it was free i hadn't even looked for it and i tried it out and it was like love i just fell in love with it i was going oh my goodness you are just you feel so right you know how a material you can buy just feels right? It just is hits all the right spots. So I um, oh, need a bit more of that. I continued and then I continued using it and then I went back. I think I ordered about 10 of them. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. We'll see how this goes. So, um, and I've stuck to them ever since. I have looked for alternatives because they have plastic, these have plastic barrels and I'm really conscious that I, I use a lot of these kinds of pens and when they run out, I, I can't change the ink inside so I have to buy a new one. I've been looking for alternatives where I could change it so I wouldn't have to use the, um, the plastic barrel, but I haven't found anything so far that um, works for me because I like the fineness of the pen, I like the colour of the ink and I like that it is um, waterproof so I can just go instantly in with watercolour, not even have to wait for it to dry or anything and it just won't smudge. Right, and that was Cerulean. Now, this one 
is Cobalt Blue Deep. Where did I put my pen? Okay. Cobalt Blue Deep by Winsor & Newton. And that was Cerulean Blue Chromium by Daniel Smith. Um, with the Black Friday deals though, I found some pens on Amazon Japan again. I was looking during the deals because I'm always looking for good deals for art materials because they're usually so expensive. Um, I did find a few pens that I'm going to try out. Um, won't say much, too much about them before I uh, showcase them to you because what if they get lost or something in the post or <laughs> and um, I end up not having them to show to you so I, I did get a few pens I also got some Holbein uh, paints um, which I am not extremely familiar with I've tried a few in the past but I um, I bought a set um, so I'll be trying I'll be unboxing those and trying them out if they make it to my house because post is always unpredictable I'm just going to add a little bit of water, very, around, very quickly around this. Have I been talking too much? I probably have been talking too much, I don't know. I just start rambling and don't stop. Um, right, so, uh, this is Cobalt Blue Deep by, let me see, can't really see, Windsor & Newton. This is a lovely colour. It, it isn't um, PB22, it's PB74. Um, and as you may have noticed, I have basically, what I did was I chose single pigment, um, colours to, well, did I put auto in that? No, I did, but it's, um, it's dried. <laughs> um, single, uh, single pigment colours to, uh, to add to my big mixing box and a, a, a few convenience colours at the end there which I tried and liked let's just do that and um, if you can hear the hoover, I apologise. <laughs> There's a bit of cleaning going on downstairs. There was a storm last night and I stayed up half the night because um, the thunder and the lightning woke me and then I couldn't sleep. It, it was a crazy storm. It was so loud and it was so bright. It was like having flash photography through your window. <laughs> and, we, and, you know, we have curtains, so it's not like um, the light wouldn't have been blocked, but it was so bright. Um, next, I have... Cobalt to turquoise light, which I'm going to do. Okay. 
So, as I said, I'll be going into a hospital on Thursday, which means, unfortunately, next week, I don't think I'm going to be able to achieve two videos. I'm going to try my best for one. Uh, I can hear Baloo stirring in his bed. Please stay in bed, Baloo. Um, as I was saying, I'll try, I'll try my best for one, which I hope I will achieve. It's just that after the treatment, I have a little bit of side effects and I might not be feeling my best and I don't want to be on camera like that really I just, it's just, I'm just not fun to be around <laughs> last time it sounded like I was drunk for like three days and I was doing silly things like putting um, the herb bottles in the um, plate cupboard or you know putting I don't know just, just silly things like I had no rhyme or reason I just I wasn't thinking straight I couldn't think straight I was so tired so imagine me doing a video like that. It wouldn't be too much fun. Or it would be ve it would be hilarious probably. But hopefully the good news is if the treatment goes well, I don't have to repeat it for another 6 months, which I'm so looking forward to. Right, um Next, I have Cobalt Turquoise Light. And the Hoover has fallen into its slumber, which is good. For precision I use, um, for precision, I'm not really exactly precise here, but I use the tip of the brush. But if I want to lay more water, I just press the belly of the brush to release the water. These brushes, I love them because you can achieve both so well. These and I think I've tried the Sabi brushes, though I am, have not my eye on some Pro Art which I haven't tried yet. I kind of stuck to the usual suspects when it came to brushes because, oh, this is staining. So it's not going to be very successful when I try and feather it out. I'm um, sorry. I was saying that I stick to the usual subset. I stick to the usual suspects when it comes to brushes because they are so expensive. The good ones are really expensive, and for watercolor, um, I don't know. I, I've. Tr yeah, well, I tried a few when I started out and I found these to be really good and I just suck with them. But I will try other ones. Um, which I'll, I'll we'll probably try together. I'll, I'll bring them on and review them. So, next up we have... Now, this is one that I struggle to pronounce. Indunthrone? by Daniel Smith. It's a PB60. That was a PB50, by the way. Which I have half covered in my envelope here. So there's only going to be a peekaboo island peeking out. Oh. Whoops. 
before I do that, I'll just add some water in there because it's a lake and there needs to be water in there. I think I'm talking too much in this video. I am sorry. I just get too excited when I'm, I'm, I'm creating and uh, I'm sharing stuff. I'm like, I want to speak to you and talk to you. Right, okay. So, Indun, Indun Throne? I think I've seen this spelled um, in Dunthrine and in Dunthrone. Maybe the Indon Throne is more regal. <laughs> very, very bad pun that was. But... Okay. I'll shush a bit. too much staining Antwerp blue which basically is a passion blue Daniel Smith does Antwerp blue and Prussian blue but they I think they both have the same uh, pigment number PB 27 have to put quite a little bit of water in this one around this to uh, keep it wet because my um, my paper hasn't been pre-wet so it's just going to absorb it <laughs> like, like a sponge Yeah, mistakenly picked that one up. Russian blues make beautiful greens, but I think they might have an issue with light fastness. Please don't take my word for it. Please look it up. I am. Um, I do avoid um, mixing with Prussians. Prussian, no, Prussian blue, not Prussians, um, because I sounded so wrong. Sorry. Um, because I think I read somewhere that it has problems with light fastness, but that doesn't make me correct. Please do your own light fast um, tests or read up on you know the manufacturers what they say. 
this is just my um, my impression it does bloom very prettily there there are some colours that I do love um, and I would only use in my sketchbook because of light fast issues one of them is um, Rose Madder which I adore but is very fugitive <laughs> so I would never put something like that on a final piece that I would intend to sell but I can enjoy it in my sketchbook because it ain't going anywhere and sometimes it's okay it's just fine to use paints that don't intend to go anywhere they just therefore you having fun with them and no one has to see anything it's just you and your paints and you're enjoying them which is totally totally fine <laughs> have this impression that rose matter if I sniff the the um, um, the tube and yes sometimes I do sniff my paints I sniff my paper sometimes as well I know that makes me very strange sorry um, it smells like rose petals I was just I was blown away I was going I can smell roses <laughs> and it was the paint um, fun fact I think it was the Windsor and Newton Rose Meadow okay so we did Antwerp Blue now we're going to Windsor Blue which is a phthalo and extremely staining so what I'm going to do is put plenty of water so the paper won't become the sponge and just absorb it and it won't move. Just plenty of water before I apply the paint. Um, yeah. Such a vibrant blue. I haven't been a huge fan of Atholos because um, my affections lie with natural pigments. But as I'm getting more, you know, experimental with my paint, I think I am missing out. I think I there is a place for them in my pa in my palette. Please don't stain too much. Please don't stain too much. Um, especially when mixing greens, because I can totally see the uh, the greener hued thalos um, really mixing some beautiful greens, and I've just missed out all these years somehow. It's a bit of a, um, a race against time working with Thalo, so it's like quickly get in there before you stain my paper. I can't do anything with you. Okay, blue Ap appetite. I don't want to, say, it sounds like I'm saying appetite as in I'm hungry, appetite, but it's with an A. And it does not have a pigment number, which is interesting. If you would like me to do like a, a traditional swatch, like a proper swatch and not this playful swatching, of my blues let me know 
because I do realise that this is an indulgence on my part that I am basically playing with my paints and you are possibly not getting the best impression um, of the colour and the texture of the paints and their um, and how they behave and I will absolutely do just a traditional swatch of them this is just a little bit like my um, my trees the other night other day the other night the other day when I uh, swatched them it's a little bit of fun okay I have a feeling that I've l left one behind, but I'm not quite sure which one I have because these are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yes, I have left one, and I think it's probably cerulean blue shade, which I'll do up there. See, if I talk too much, I get distracted, and I don't know what I'm doing. Toby and turquoise. This beautiful Michael Harding colour. So pretty. And it's a phthalo, so do I have enough water on that? Yeah, possibly. Let's add a little bit more. Add a teeny bit more here. A little bit there. There we go. I think I was too scared to add too much <laughs> colour because it's it is a um, there's a colour on you know firework colour. It is just explode. It's like an explosion. I think it's one of my um, uh, one of my viewers commented that it has a it's really explosive colour. The Michael Harding ones. I was going and I agree because so full of pigment For, well the ones I've tried I've only tried three so I will be trying more in the future fingers crossed um, and now this which is going to be my mountain blue by Schmincke Schmincke is another um, brand that I would like to try more colours from. I've uh, stuck quite a while with um, I'm doing Newton Daniel Smith. I've tried a few Schmincke colours and I did like them. So. If you have recommendations on what colours I should try from Schmincke, that would be really useful, so I can check them out. But Lou is still fast asleep. He went out this morning and played a whole lot in the garden. Um, after the storm last night, the garden's really mu uh, muddy. He didn't seem to mind. <laughs> He was like rolling around in the mud. 
going, oh yeah, this is nice. Really liking this mud thing. I had to lay towels on my <laughs> on the furniture in my studio when I came back up. Otherwise his muddy paws would be everywhere. And I hate to think if he wake, wakes up and comes and treads all over this paper now. We get islands and muddy paws all over it. Um, right. So, and my last colour is the one that I probably forgot is this one which is okay so I started French ultramarine cobalt blue um, cerulean blue cobalt blue deep love how that has a violet hue and then I went to cobalt turquoise yeah it is the cerulean blue red shade that I forgot And that pigment is uh, PB35. It's Windsor and Newton, I believe, yes. Do like when they um, have a colour and they've got a red shade and a, or a blue shade or a yellow shade or a green shade because it really guides you into how it will mix with other colours. So this is a red shade, so it should mix really well with um, reds to make violets. Right, I'm going to pause this video here so I can write the names of the colours next to their islands and I'll be back in a minute. So I've added all the names again in my tiny handwriting. Um, and I couldn't resist and I just added a little bit of colour to the inside of the um, of the islands just to give it a little bit more of a map feel. I, I did it very quickly, very haphazardly, so I apologise for not sticking to the lines. Um, I used the colours I used for inside. This is Yavapai. This is jadeite, this is serpentine, and this is potter's pink. Those four colours I used. Um, so that's it. That was me swatching my blues well, whilst indulging in <laughs> a bit of relaxing time with you. Um, next, as I said, on Thursday, I'll be going back into hospital. When I come back, um, my first priority is to, well, basically um, get better. And then um, I have to do, I want, well, I have a plan to do a video for my patrons, um, which I'm really excited about. I'm going to do a Christmas card tutorial for them. And I'll be then doing, hopefully, another video for my YouTube channel. Um, which I am keeping my fingers crossed will be an unboxing because I'm waiting for various uh, things I purchased during the Black Friday sale. Um, before I go, I'm going to um, tell you that I am so, so grateful for all of you here. I, I know I say this every time, but I'm just so blown away by all the positive um, messages and comments and the people who have subscribed. I'm so thankful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you to everyone. Everyone that's here. Just watching my video helps me. But subscribing is good. <laughs> And leaving a comment is really good because I love reading your comments. And if you like the uh, video, it would really help the channel grow if you hit the like button. 
so um, I'm not very good at this um, oh, comment subscribe and <laughs> like thing am I I need a bit more practice um, also I'm gonna before I go I'll I'll leave all these materials down below I'll put them down below for you to find um, the, the sketchbook the colors that I've used the pen that I've used my brushes everything that I have used um, and I just I just want to say thank you again thank you so so much I hope I wasn't rambling too much I hope I hope um, you found this relaxing way or this relaxing playful way of swatching um, enjoyable let me know also let me know if you want me to swatch the blues in a very straightforward um, orthodox manner I will absolutely do that for you and um, fingers crossed I'll I'll see you soon keep everyone keep safe keep positive keep onwards and thank you bye bye for now bye Bye.